Hi, Lily Doodly Namorinos. Welcome back to this next episode of Hot News. It is a Thursday. We've gone through April Fool's Day with hardly an uh, issue, I think, personally. That's, I'm just, I didn't get through. I wasn't bamboozled besides once. Anyways, that's not, okay, just leave me alone, all right? Which, I'm not gonna leave you alone with these existential questions that we got, because today's question, is the ocean salty? Because the land never waves back. The land is so ungrateful, just standing there all stoic-like. I mean, at least tell me you love me, okay? You know, I commit myself to you, I'm waving all the time, I say hello, and the only thing you can give me is just a non-committal, Ridiculous, right? That's I would be salty if that was the case. If I was constantly trying to interact with somebody and they didn't show any affection back at me, not talking about my personal life. Just leave, okay, let's move on to the hot news. Okay, we got tech news today, which is the dumbest, weirdest, stupidest launch that I've seen from Intel in quite some time. It just why does why why are they even trying at this point? Honestly, they probably could have skipped this generation, not put any effort into developing anything, spent no money on the R and D, and just skipped it. Went to the the next one. Wait until you get things right. But no, that's not what they chose to do. So just like before where Intel decides to launch at the dumbest time possible, like six hours before Threadripper launches, they decided the best time for us to launch our 10th generation of mobile laptop CPUs is midnight after April Fool's Day is over. 12.01 a.m. on April 2nd is when the embargo lifted. Perfect time to release new laptops. And as we've seen from AMD's releases this past week, AMD trounces what Intel has on the market. And guess what Intel brought to the market? Not much. You can get eight cores at 5.3 gigahertz if you have enough cooling, if it's good enough. But guess what? This embargo, there's no product. There's nothing, there's no, there's no benchmarks out there. Even the famous reviewers hardware unboxed who give you more benchmarks than you you can take down with a spoonful of breakfast. You just, they don't, they just talked about it. There's nothing there. So the Intel side of things, things are weird. You're not getting much more besides a couple extra cores. It probably won't beat AMD two-handedly. If it even does, you're probably gonna need a gargantuan $5,000 laptop with a mega cooler in order to hit that 5.3 gigahertz that they're calling out. It's just not gonna be something that makes a whole lot of sense. This feels like a gap generation, which just shouldn't be here right now and it's a little ridiculous. However, with the launch of the new Intel CPUs on the laptops, there's also a launch of new NVIDIA GPUs that went alongside it, at least in the mobile sector. So the NVIDIA 20 series Super GPUs are now out for mobile. You got the 2080 and 2070 Super with Max-Q variants, but no 2060 Super here or coming at any point, and the notebooks will probably go on sale sometime around April 15th. But one of the good news with this is that NVIDIA is also lowering the price of their laptops. They're shifting things down so that a 1660 Ti laptop typically costs around $1,000. Now you should be able to get an RTX 2060 in that price point. So that's some good launch from NVIDIA. They're also talking about their new Max-Q technology, which performs very similarly to what we heard from AMD with their Smart Shift technology, where if the CPU is not utilizing something, the GPU can take some of that extra resource and then be able to get you better frames. So NVIDIA is gonna be rolling that out. They also changed some things to the NVIDIA Optimus technology, allowing for better switching and for greater performance on that. The dynamic display switch will allow it so that you don't have to like reset things when you're trying to transition between the iGPU and the dedicated GPU. So the NVIDIA part of the new launch is okay. The Intel part is just like, why were you even trying? This shouldn't, this shouldn't be here. I understand that we as consumers benefit from competition. I understand that we as consumers want more product and more variety out on the market, but this doesn't feel like more variety. It feels like like they're launching something for the sake of launching something. I've complained about this every time a company has done it. Even when AMD launched their new RX 500X series to give an OEM rebrand for the new year. It's just, it's a move that makes people think they're getting something different when in reality, they're getting the same old thing. It's marketing and nothing but marketing, and it's kind of sad. However, what one of the big things to take away from this new Intel and NVIDIA launch is with all of the OEMs jumping on board, it does seem like Intel and NVIDIA is going to be the way going forward. Hardly a manufacturer is gonna have their flagship be an AMD plus NVIDIA GPU, an AMD CPU plus an NVIDIA GPU. That's probably not going to be the case with so many laptops announced having the new 10th gen and the RTX Super Series. It does seem like 
even though AMD does have a better product, companies are still gonna choose to go with Intel. For whatever reason that's going to be, it probably has a lot to do with marketing money that potentially Intel might be providing them. That's speculation on my end, not quite sure, but you're probably going to get a lesser product as the flagship that these companies are pushing. And it does seem like there's only very few who are willing to come out with new product lines that will give you AMD CPUs with NVIDIA GPUs. So a little sad there. But let's talk about another lineup that probably doesn't need to exist, and that's Intel's 10th gen desktop series, because there's a new leak coming out showing benchmarks for the i5-10400, 10500, the i7-10700, and the i5-10600K. There's a whole bunch of benchmarks basically showing them on par with the Ryzen version of everything, the i7-10700 being nearly on par with the Ryzen 7 3700X. So really, this is everything we were expecting. You're gonna get a couple more cores. Every Intel's gonna be shifting things down the lineup just like they've been, but it will come down to pricing, not necessarily the performance. Intel and AMD are gonna be matched equal for equal, so Intel will have to compromise on some of their pricing strategies in order to take a lead back from AMD with how much sales have been going to Ryzen as of late. And hopes have been Ryzen for a new AMD GPU. We've already gotten leaks of the RDNA2 stuff coming out, and I wasn't gonna cover this at all because I knew, I, like it just didn't, there was no reason to cover it, however, I got I got sent this on Twitter. I got sent this on Discord. People were just like, Brett, talk about this. And that is the AMD Radeon Big Navi RX Gamma flagship GPU specs and benchmarks. A 26 teraflop, 21.2 gig array, 1.5 terabytes per second memory bandwidth with GDDR7, RDNA2, HDMI 8K support, 350 watt board power, PCI Express 5.0, 80 compute units. It was an April Fool's joke. Okay, WCCF Tech did this. They've been doing this where they just talk about gigantic GPUs that you can never have. Obviously, this is fake and I wasn't gonna talk about it, but so many people sent it to me saying, hey, check this out. And I was just like, I did. And I didn't wanna cover it because it was fake. It was April Fool's. So don't be fooled but you're gonna be fooled by the upcoming AI revolution because DeepMind has come out with a new AI that can play video games better than basically everybody. They tested it in 57 Atari games and it destroys one. If you look at this, the J little dot right there, that is the Atari 57. It is above the average human by quite a bit. It destroys everything. It destroys all of the AIs that came before. It can play Pitfall. It can play Montezuma's Revenge. It can destroy you in any Atari game. And that's really sad for the upcoming AI revolution. Death to human! But when the AI revolts against us, they'll have all of our information thanks to, in part, data leaks, which the hotel chain of Marriott has confirmed that they have had another data breach with 5.2 million guest records being compromised in their latest hack. They're saying that in late February, the breach of an unspecified property system was at a franchise hotel. The hackers obtained the login details of two employees and they got 5.2 million details. And we got the details of a new EPA regulation going into cars. It appears that the Trump administration administration is going to be curbing some of the efforts put in place by the Obama administration as far as how efficient cars have to be every single year. The 2012 Obama administration standard pushed cars forward about 5% every single year, whereas the new EPA regulation will be about 1.5% over every year from 2021 until 2026, which will put cars at about an average of 40 miles per gallon at the end of it, whereas the Obama standard put it at 54 miles per gallon. The Trump administration is saying that this is going to save people money. Other experts Experts disagree. We'll have to see how it plays out, but it definitely won't be as good for the environment. I'll tell you that much because I mean, smog and pollution coming out of the cars. But I mean, if everybody's on lockdown because of Voldemort, nobody's driving anyway. So does this really matter? One of the big things for South Africa is they got a two rand price decrease on petrol for the month of April, but at the time where nobody's driving around. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> and it doesn't matter that you wanted to watch videos on your Apple phone previously because of the way Apple sets everything up. They want to take a revenue for any in-app purchases, which which includes things like renting movies on the Google Play Store or Amazon Prime Video. Well, it came out that Amazon and Apple have come to an agreement where you can now rent Prime Videos on Apple devices through the, the app itself, which I, I hate it so much when I wanna go buy a Kindle and read it on my phone, but then I can't do it on my gosh dang phone. <sighs> Fix that too, please, please. Okay, I just, I don't care who gets the money. I just wanna read my books on my phone. And I just wanted the merger between T-Mobile and Sprint to be over and thankfully, finally, it was.
as of yesterday, T-Mobile announcing that it's completed its merger with Sprint to create the new T-Mobile, which means that the CEO, John Ledger, is handing off all of the responsibilities to the previous COO, Mike Sievert, who is now going to take over in the role. So T-Mobile is now T-Mobile Sprint together as one. All the mobile carriers are converging. We need a convergence of social media apps because too many companies are trying to beat each other and it's driving me wild. And this came out yesterday on April Fool's, but I think it's not an April Fool's joke because there's so many other actual publications picking this up. I'm gonna take it with a grain of salt, thinking it's fake, hoping it's fake, wanting it to be fake, but knowing it's probably ultimately going to be real, which is YouTube is potentially going to have a counter to TikTok by creating YouTube shorts. So, you know, YouTube taking over stories like they did from Instagram and Snapchat wasn't enough. They now need to combat TikTok with shorts, which I'm not sure how that's going to be different from the stories that we already have, but the, the shorts is going to be like, you're going to have music with licensing from YouTube and then you can make stuff. I don't, YouTube didn't say if it's real. I don't know how this is going to work. Isn't it? Aren't TikToks just stories? Like not even TikTok has music in every single one. That was the original thing. It was musically where you had to use music and you were like lip syncing. That makes sense but now TikTok is a mixture of that and just a longer vine and I don't know what's going on and how YouTube even makes sense to do this I hope it's fake I want it to be fake and I hope you continue to watch our twitch streams that we do every single day we do hot news live every single day over on twitch follow us twitch.tv forward slash uf disciple go check us out there anyways twitch is seeing an increase in viewership they saw a 23 percent increase in March with other streaming services seeing increases as well mixer went up 16 percent YouTube gaming streaming saw an increase of 10.7 and Facebook gaming saw an increase of 3.8 because who the heck goes to Facebook to watch people play video games? I don't understand. It should be a dedicated thing. Facebook, you should have just like created an off-brand thing that you own. Like just, just buy somebody else. Don't, don't try to make it your own thing. Okay. Do what Amazon did. Keep Twitch. It's don't be dumb. And it would be dumb if Spotify didn't have as much music as it did before. And thankfully, they're not gonna have less because they came to a new agreement with Warner Music Group to have a new global licensing set up with them. So Spotify not losing Warner Music Group stuff. And Slack is gaining stuff, not losing stuff. Spotify didn't lose. I'm talking about addition, subtraction. It's a math segue. It's what's going on right now. Slack is adding integration with Microsoft Teams for video calling with the increase of everybody working remotely and needing to use video interfacing for a whole bunch of different stuff. And Microsoft Teams is gonna be part of a Slack integration now, which is good considering that basically the entire world is switched to using Zoom, except for Tesla, because Elon Musk put out a memo saying that he is banning Tesla employees from using Zoom over privacy concerns, which is a big thing that has been coming out as of late. There's been a ton of controversy surrounding Zoom. One of the things is that they're not end-to-end -end encrypted, even though they said they are. So that's a big issue. There's also the fact that the way that Zoom installs on Mac clients is very similar to the way that Mac OS malware is installed by not needing permissions and all of that. There's there's also the issue that Zoom was sending details to Facebook. There's also the issue that several email addresses got leaked from Zoom because Zoom views it as owning the email addresses once you sign up for it. There's like several different privacy concerns that have come out from Zoom. Some of them were like, okay, you shouldn't have this, but it's not such a big deal when nobody really uses you except for like corporate stuff. But now that everybody and their grandma is using it, obviously this escalates the entire situation where you're adding tons of users who are then like, compromised. It's a big deal now. So if you're using Zoom, maybe reconsider it. It doesn't seem like it's actually all that healthy of a company right now. They had so many bugs and not locked down feature sets that with this scale increase that they're seeing, they were not ready for. Microsoft Teams exist. Skype, even though people don't like it, is also a thing that exists. FaceTime, you got group FaceTimes. You got Google Duo, which can support up to 12 people. Hey, hey. That was the thing we reported in the previous hot news. You got Google Duo. So it seems like Zoom is not ready to deal with the massive surge of everything that's going on. And it seems like Apple is not ready to deal with the massive surge of delays coming their way with new reports from the Wall Street Journal saying that Apple is scrambling on trying to figure out if they can get the iPhone 12 out on time. And it's not just for the fact that like TSMC might be slightly delayed on their five nanometer note, which they haven't said they are, but it's a possibility if Taiwan goes into any sort of lockdown. There's also the 
the issue of like 5G modems not being produced at the right time and all the different system components that they could integrate into their iPhones might have production delays, which would mean that they would have to delay the iPhone. It also looks like the iPhone 9 or the 4.7 inch iPhone didn't launch at the same time that it was supposed to with the new iPad and the new MacBook refreshes. It seems like it was supposed to come out then, but it didn't because of like production issues that are going on. However, while Apple doesn't want to delay the next iPhone, they do want to help you delay your next credit card payment with them on the Apple card because we reported in an episode of Hot News last month that they were deferring March payments with no interest penalty on them whatsoever. If you contacted their support line, it appears that Apple is once again extending that to April. So in case you have an Apple card and you are in financial dire straits and you're not able to pay it, just contact their customer support and they will try to help you out. So good guy, Apple somehow, but bad guy ISPs and freaking mobile data carriers and it's just causing us to have data caps and I don't like it. Google Fi is trying to transition that a little bit with the obviously the Voldemort issue that's going on right now. They're raising the full speed data limit on Google Fi from 15 gigabytes to 30 gigabytes. 15 on your pay as you go plan and it was 22 gigabytes on the unlimited plan. I hate how unlimited it's not unlimited because then they throttle you down to 256 kilobits. So stupid. Now it's up to 30 gigabytes so you can get full speed up to that which if you're using more than 30 gigabytes of mobile data a month, you shouldn't be on Google Fi in the first place, probably on like a legitimate cell phone carrier, which just in this whole conversation, Ars Technica put out an article talking about Comcast waving data caps, hasn't hurt its network, why not make it permanent? They asked Comcast, why not make it permanent? And they were just like, this is going on until March, please don't ask us about anything else. And it's basically just money, money. Data caps are, exist only because of cash, because companies wanna charge you for something that literally doesn't impact them whatsoever just because they can. We saw them do this with cable crap, now they're doing it with internet. Oh, we're just gonna charge you for whatever we can. This is one of the reasons why the net neutrality issue was such a big freaking deal, okay? We're gonna charge you to go to YouTube. We're gonna charge you to go to Netflix. We're gonna charge you to go to Facebook. We're gonna have to pay for the different sections of the internet, which is giant load of banana hammock garbage, okay? And data caps are part of that. Data caps should go down. Please, FCC, I know you don't listen to the people, but Ajeep Hi, if you're listening, data caps need to go down like the Titanic. Just stop existing, never make a movie about them, just be done with them. And you thought we were done with crypto mining? No, because Microsoft invented a new way, crypto mining. You wanna know what it is, Reese? You ready for it? Using your brain waves and your body's heat as proof of work. The patent application from Microsoft says a brain wave or body heat emitted from the user when the user performs the task provided by information or service providers, such as viewing advertisement or using certain internet services can be used in the mining process. Crypto mining with your brain. Big brain time, my friends, big brain, okay? Yeah. This is big brain time. You thought mining was dead? No, transition from GPUs to you. You are the product. Now, you're the product for Google, you're the product for Microsoft. With mining, this is how we enter into the AI revolution and the matrix. We're not battery farms. They, those were crypto mining farms in the matrix. They said we were batteries. We're inefficient batteries, but we might be really good crypto computers. And the ocean might be salty because the land never waves back. Is that it? Is that it? Should we all go to the beach when social distancing's over and wave back at the ocean so it becomes less salty? Should that be a thing that we do? Need to know, existential question of the day. And I need to know that you are watching. So if you are still watching up to this point, why don't you comment down below banana hammock? Cause I mentioned it earlier and that's the only thing on my brain right now. And I'm so sorry, I'm gonna go before this gets more awkward, goodbye. The Obama, the, the Obama, the, jeez.